Welcome back to another day in War Without End. I'm Pliskin, and today we're going to be talking about the PSG-1 sniper rifle. The PSG-1 is a West German sniper rifle developed after the 1972 Munich Olympics terrorist attack in which responders lacked the necessary tools for long-range engagements. It builds off of the HK G3 lever delay blowback operated battle rifle. It's about 15 pounds and fires the 7.62x51 NATO cartridge. It stands out from most semi automatic sniper rifles by being accurate enough to challenge bolt actions up to 1,000 meters. It can take most magazines that are compatible with a G3, including a 5 round, a 10 round, a 20 round mag, and a 50 round drum magazine. It features an illuminated telescopic sight, a low noise bolt closing device, which is basically just a forward assist type of thing like on an AR-15, and it features a free floating barrel plus an adjustable stock. Consider all that and the fact that it has easy to remove parts and a specially designed suppressor made by B&T, and this Cold War rifle has all the makings of a great modern weapon. The first time we get to see the PSG-1 sniper rifle in the Metal Gear Solid series is in Metal Gear Solid 1, where it's sadly disgraced as being the worst weapon in the game. Now there are sections where you have to use this, like the first Sniper Wolf boss fight where you're literally blocked off from progressing, as well as this bridge section which is very cheesy and forces you to have to use the PSG-1, but during the actual boss fight where snipers are supposed to be center stage with Sniper Wolf, it's actually easier to just whip out the Nikita rocket launcher to move on. This gun controls terribly. First off, you're using a PS1 D-pad to control it. Second off, it's very unresponsive and Snake acts like he has Parkinson's when trying to aim. Thirdly, you only get 5 rounds, so while you can kind of take advantage of the semi-automatic nature of this gun, not really because you'll dump a mag before you can blink. But the thing that makes this sniper rifle really terrible to use is that once you're forced down that scope, if you get hit, you get spun all the way around, and then you need to take all this time to reorientate yourself and get your sight back on the target, only to get shot again and have it move back. It's a very frustrating experience to use this gun. But on a positive note, in the cutscenes you actually get to see how well modeled this gun is. You can't during gameplay because the game doesn't really let you as it forces you into the scope, but in the cutscene specifically when Sniper Wolf dies, you get to see how well modeled this PSG-1 is. Not that it's very difficult, as the silhouette with the unique grip, scope, and stock is very iconic, and even people that don't really know guns will recognize the PSG-1. Still, I can appreciate that the cutscene brings this much attention to the gun so we get to see the time and effort that went into modeling this thing. As per usual, with all the other weapons as well, you can call Nastasha and hear what she has to say about the rifle. Excellent. That is a PSG-1, one of the best sniper rifles in the world. It is accurate enough to shoot cleanly through a 2.5 centimeter square from a distance of 100 meters. Unlike other sniper rifles, the PSG-1 is not bolt action. It is semi-automatic. Its best feature is that it allows for rapid fire. When you are shooting over long distances, the slightest tremble can make you miss your target by inches. Try to keep your hands as still as possible. As per usual, Nastasha is right about pretty much everything she says about the gun itself. However, the tip she gives you to control the recoil is absolute bullshit. 
this gun, it doesn't matter if you're prone, if you're not taking diazepam, like, you're not going to be able to shoot straight. And then even then, it's still going to be a hard time to aim with that PS1 controller and the unresponsiveness. But yeah, this gun is incredibly accurate. It stands out for being a semi-automatic accuracy, you know, first type of gun, which you don't really see in semi-automatic rifles. They usually get relegated to DMR rules. But yeah, in terms of her advice on how to tackle it, not even Nastasha can save you from the terrible weapon design that went into this gun. Among many other things, Metal Gear Solid 2 definitely improved how the PSG-1 handles. Now you actually get the 20 round magazine so you can take advantage of that rapid fire. Now the level design caters to this gun a lot better. You don't have to worry about people shooting at you if you're using this in the sniper dependent areas. Instead you're covering other people so you can take your time, focus on the accuracy. The shake is still there however with Pentasmin and you know being able to use the sticks to aim now, it's much smoother. The PS2 and the Leap in controller technology did this rifle wonders. But we also get an alternate version. We get the PSG-1T, which fires Trank Darts. This one here has the 5 round magazine. Both of them are equally viable, of course you're gonna have more ammo and more capacity for rapid fire with the normal PSG-1, but yeah, this weapon again is greatly modeled, and now it's actually fun to use in the arenas designed for it. The Emma section will go down in history as one of the best designed sniper sections ever. Now, Metal Gear Solid 2 is special because this time around, we get to call the man himself to tell us about these two rifles. The PSG-1 is an anti-terrorist automated sniper rifle. It features roller-locked action which allows a full, free-floating barrel. The end result is an automatic rifle with precision equal to that of a bolt-action sniper rifle. The rifle has a 5-round group capacity of 50 millimeters at a range of approximately 270 meters. In my opinion, the PSG-1 is one of the finest sniper rifles in the world. Although you've probably fired a few rounds in VR training, there are a few differences in handling the rifle you should be aware of. First, that the PSG-1 is equipped with a special magnification adjustable scope. For precision shooting, it allows you to zoom in on your target. And for wide range viewing, all you have to do is zoom out. Another difference is that you aren't limited to firing from the prone position. In short, you can fire from a crouching or standing position. However, the less stable your position, the tougher it is to hold your aim steady. For accuracy, the best thing to do is crawl up to your target and fire from a prone position. Now Snake brings up most of the points we've already gone over. The free-floating barrel, the fact that this gun is crazy accurate, the fact that it's semi-auto. The one issue with what he said here is when he talks about the adjustable scope that we see in the game. Now, it's to my understanding that the ZF 6x42 scope that the PSG-1 comes with is fixed and therefore not adjustable. Uh, maybe I've read this wrong or I've misunderstood it. If there's any of you that have actually had the pleasure of putting time on this weapon, please let me know down in the comments below. However, as far as I know, that's the only issue with what I've seen him talking about here. But if there's one thing that him and I definitely agree on, is that this is definitely one of the best sniper rifles ever made. What does he have to say about the Trank version, however? The PSG-1T that you have there is a PSG-1 with a modified barrel for firing tranquilizer rounds. It handles like a PSG-1. The only difference is that it spares lives. It's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Now here I definitely have a problem with what he said, because it takes a lot more than just modifying your gun's barrel to fire less than lethal rounds. The pressures of the actual round that you're firing out are usually so low that they don't really function in a semi-automatic form. Take shotguns for example. 
if you want to run a less than lethal round, like a beanbag round, you need to be using a pump action or rack the bolt of your semi-automatic shotgun if you want the weapon to cycle since you don't have that gas pressure that semi-automatic weapons are usually dependent on. So you would probably need to change a lot more than just the barrel. While Metal Gear Solid 4 continues its disrespectful trend of not featuring key legacy weapons in the game, you at the very least get a G3. It's a standard battle rifle configuration with the 20 round magazine and the select fire, and it's great to have here and it functions as an excellent weapon in the game. However, if you're going to include not just the G3, but also an MP5 and an HK21, you might as well just throw in a PSG1, since you're including the entire family of rifles here. If anything, the PSG1 could have been an overpowered endgame unlock that would have acted how the game's M14 acted. However, I, I guess having a G3 is better than nothing. Still, what a shame. Ironically enough, it's the black sheep of the Metal Gear family, not the love letter, that actually shows respect to the PSG-1. In Metal Gear Solid 5, you get the MRS-4 sniper variant, which isn't really a PSG-1. It's mocked up to try to look like one, however, as I've explained many times before, this game utilizes pseudo-guns. So basically, this is as though someone tried to take an FNFAL and mock it up to act like a PSG-1. The dead giveaway is going to be in the charging handle. The charging handle is directly on the side, close to the magazine, like on an FAL. However, on a PSG-1, it's modeled after the G3, where the charging handle is much higher up, closer to the end of the barrel. Still. This mock-up serves the same role, and you get it in many different configurations, and in many ways can make it more powerful and versatile than it ever has been with the game's customization options. You can even do the same for the PSG-1T. The only thing that really stands out as being different aside from aesthetic is the fact that you get a much slower fire rate with this gun in comparison to Metal Gear Solid 1 or 2's PSG-1 sniper rifle. Before we put this rifle back into the vault for good, let's appreciate the fact that even though it started off really rough with how this gun was balanced, by Metal Gear Solid 2 it really turned itself around and created not only one of the best snipers in gaming, but also one of the best sniper sections in gaming. And of course, while Metal Gear Solid 4 seems to feature every lever delay blowback gun but the PSG-1, at the very least we get a nice little mock-up in Metal Gear Solid 5 that many players have had fun playing with for the aesthetic, for the memories of the first game, for the memories of the second game, and for the meta, utilizing that semi-automatic trank sniper to break the game in many ways. This is one of the coolest sniper rifles to ever grace gaming, and I'm very happy that one of the games it's known for showing up in, if not THE game it's known for showing up in, is the Metal Gear Solid series. If you're interested in hearing me break down more of the sniper rifles or even weapons in Metal Gear Solid 5 and explain where they came from and what they actually are, I have an entire series dedicated to that. I'll link that sniper video down in the description below. This has been another day in War Without End. This has been Pliskin. Over and out. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him. <laughs>